Male External Genital Organs Introduction Male genital organs are situated both outside the pelvic cavity and within the pelvic cavity. As lower temperature is required for spermatogenesis, the testes are placed outside the pelvic cavity in the scrotal sac. Since urethra serves both the functions of urination and ejaculation, there is only one tube enclosed in the urogenital triangle. Dissection From the superficial inguinal ring, make a longitudinal incision downwards through the skin of the anterolateral aspects of the scrotum till its lower part. Reflect the skin alone if possible otherwise reflect skin, dartus, and the other layers together till the testis enveloped in its tunica vaginalis is visualized. Lift the testis and spermatic cord from the scrotum. Cut through the spermatic cord at the superficial inguinal ring and remove it together with the testis and put it in a tray of water. Incise and reflect the coverings if any, e.g. remains of external spermatic fascia, cremaster muscle, cremasteric fascia and internal spermatic fascia. Separate the various structures of spermatic cord. Feel ductus deferens as the important constituent of spermatic cord. Make a transverse section through the testis to visualize its interior. Identify the epididymis capping the superior pole and lateral surface of the testis. The slit-like sinus of epididymis formed by tucking in of the visceral layer of peritoneum between the testis and the epididymis is seen on the anterolateral aspect of the testis. Cut through and reflect the skin along the dorsum of the penis from the symphysis pubis to the end of the prepuce. Find the extension of the membranous layer of the superficial fascia of the abdominal wall onto the penis. Fundiform ligament. The superficial dorsal vein of the penis lies in the superficial fascia. Trace it proximally to drain into any of the superficial external pudendal veins of thigh. Deep to this vein is the deep fascia and suspensory ligament of the penis. Divide the deep fascia in the same line as the skin incision. Reflect it to see the deep dorsal vein with the dorsal arteries and nerves on each side. Make a transverse section through the body of the penis, but leave the two parts connected by the skin of urethral surface or ventral surface. Identify two corpora cavernosa and single corpus spongiosum traversed by the urethra. Organs included. Penis scrotum testes epididyms and spermatic cords. Penis. The penis is the male organ of copulation. It is made up of, a, a root or attached portion, and, b, a body or free portion, fig 17.1a. Root of penis. The root of the penis is situated in the superficial perineal pouch. It is composed of three masses of erectile tissue, namely the two crura and one bulb. Each crus, Latin leg, is firmly attached to the margins of the pubic arch, and is covered by the ischiocavenosis. The hat is attached to the perineal membrane in between the two crura. It is covered by the hudalbospongios BS. Its deep surface is pierced, above its center, by the urethra, which traverses its substance to reach the corpus spongiosum, located in the body. This part of the urethra within the bulb shows a dilatation in its floor, called the intrabulbar fossa, fig 17.1b. Body of Penis the free portion of the penis is completely enveloped by skin. It is continuous with the root in front of the lower part of the pubic symphysis. It is composed of three elongated masses of erectile tissue. During erection of the penis these masses become engorged with blood leading to considerable enlargement. These masses are the right and left corpora cavernosa, and a median corpus spongiosum. The penis has a ventral surface that faces backwards and downwards, and a dorsal surface that faces forwards and upwards. The two corpora cavernosa, Latin hollow, are the forward continuations of the crura. They are in close apposition with each other throughout their length. The corpora cavernosa do not reach the end of the penis. Each of them terminates under cover of the glans penis in a blunt conical extremity. They are surrounded by a strong fibrous envelope called the tunica albogenea. The tunica albogenea has superficial longitudinal fibers enclosing both the corpora, and deep circular fibers that enclose each corpus separately, and also form a median septum. The corpus spongiosum is the forward continuation of the bulb of the penis. Its terminal part is expanded to form a conical enlargement, called the glans penis. 
throughout its whole length it is traversed by the urethra. Like the corpora, it is also surrounded by a fibrous sheath, Fig 17.2. The base of the glans F Latin acron, Dennis has a projecting margin, the corona Latin crown, glandes, which overhangs an obliquely grooved constriction, known as the neck of the penis. Within the glands the urethra shows a dilatation, in its roof called the navicular fossa. The skin covering the penis is very thin and dark in color. It is loosely connected with the facial sheath of the organ. At the neck it is folded to form the prepuce F Latin before penis, or jaw skin which covers the glands to a varying extent and can be retracted backwards to expose the glands. On the undersurface of the glands there is a median fold of skin called the enflum, Latin bridal. The potential space between the glands and the prepuce is known as the prepucial sac. On the corona glandes and on the neck of the penis there are numerous small prepucial or sebaceous glands which secrete a sebaceous material called the smegma, which collects in the prepucial sac. The superficial fascia of the penis consists of very loosely arranged areolar tissue, completely devoid of fat. It may contain a few muscle fibers. It is continuous with the membranous layer of superficial fascia of the abdomen above and of the perineum below. It contains the superficial dorsal vein of the penis. The deepest layer of superficial fascia is membranous and is called the fascia of the penis or deep fascia of penis, or buck's fascia. It surrounds all three masses of erectile tissue, but does not extend into the glands. Deep to it there are the deep dorsal vein the dorsal arteries and dorsal nerves of the penis. Proximally, it is continuous with the dartus and with the fascia of the urogenital triangle. The supports of the body of penis are the following. A. The iurniform ligament which extends downwards from the linea alba and splits to enclose the penis. It lies superficial to the suspensory ligament. B. The suspensory ligament lies deep to the iurniform ligament. It extends from the pubic symphysis and blends below with the fascia on each side of the penis. Arteries of phi penis. 1. The internal pudendal artery gives off three branches which supply the penis. A. The deep artery of the parrots runs in the corpus cavernosum. It breaks up into arteries that follow a spiral course and are, therefore, called helicina arteries. B. The dorsal artery of the penis runs on the dorsum, deep to the deep fascia, and supplies the glans penis and the distal part of the corpus spongiosum, the prepuce, and the frenulum. See the artery of the bulb of the penis supplies the bulb and the proximal half of the corpus spongiosum. 2. The femoral artery gives off the superficial pudendal artery which supplies the skin and fasciae of the penis. Veins of the penis. The dorsal veins, superficial and deep, are unpaired. Superficial dorsal vein drains the prepuce and penile skin. It runs back in subcutaneous tissue and inclines to right or left, before it opens into one of the external pudendal veins. Deep dorsal vein lies deep to buck's fascia. It receives blood from the glans penis and corpora cavernosa penis, and courses back in midline between paired dorsal arteries. Near the root of the penis, it passes deep to the suspensory ligament and through a gap between the arcuate pubic ligament and anterior margin of perineal membrane, it divides into right and left branches which connect below the symphysis pubis with the internal pudendal veins and ultimately enters the prostatic plexus. Nerve supply of the penis. 1. The sensory nerve supply to the penis is derived from the dorsal nerve of the penis and the ilioinguinal nerve. The muscles of the root of the penis are supplied by the perineal branch of the pudendal nerve. 2. The autonomic nerves are derived from the pelvic plexus via the prostatic plexus. The sympathetic nerves are vasoconstrictor, and the parasympathetic nerves, S2, S3, S4, are vasodilator. The autonomic fibers are distributed through the branches of the pudendal nerve. Lymphatic drainage. Lymphatics from the glands drain into the deep inguinal nodes also called gland of cloquet. Lymphatics from the rest of the penis drain into the superficial inguinal lymph nodes. Mechanism of erection of the penis. Erection of the penis is a purely vascular phenomenon. The turgidity of the penis during its erection is contributed to by the following factors. 
One dilatation of the medicine arteries powers an increased amount of arterial blood into the cavernous spaces of the corpora cavernosa. Blood is also poured in small amount into the corpus spongiosum and into the glands by their arteries. As the spaces within the erectile tissue fill up, the penis enlarges. To this enlargement presses on the veins preventing outflow of blood through them. Contraction of the ischiocavernosus muscles probably has the same effect. 3. Expansion of the corpora cavernosa, and to a lesser extent of the corpus spongiosum, stretches the deep fascia. This restricts enlargement of the penis. Further flow of blood increases the pressure within the erectile tissue and leads to rigidity of the penis. 4. Erection is controlled by parasympathetic nerves, nervi erigens, S2, S3, S4. Scrotum. The scrotum, Latin bag, is a cutaneous bag containing the right and left testes, the epididymis, and the lower parts of the spermatic cords. Externally, the scrotum is divided into right and left parts by a ridge or raphe which is continued forwards onto the undersurface of the penis and backwards along the middle of the perineum to the anus, fig 17.3. To the left half of the scrotum hangs a little lower than the right, in correspondence with the greater length of the left spermatic cord. 3. Under the influence of cold, and in young and robust persons, the scrotum is short, corrugated and closely applied to the testis. This is due to contraction of the subcutaneous muscle of scrotum, called the dartus, Greek skinny. However, under the influence of warmth, and in old and debilitated persons, the scrotum is elongated and flaccid due to relaxation of dartus. From this it appears that the dartus muscle helps in regulation of temperature within the scrotum. Layers of the scrotum The scrotum is made up of the following layers from outwardy in words. 1. Skin continuation of abdominal skin. 2. Dartus muscle which replaces the superficial fascia. The dartus muscle is prolonged into a median vertical septum between the two halves of the scrotum. 3. The external spermatic fascia from external oblique muscle. 4. The cremasteric, Greek slash ohang, muscle and fascia from internal oblique muscle. 5. The internal spermatic fascia transversalis blood supply. The scrotum is supplied by the following arteries, superficial external pudendal, deep external pudendal, scrotal branches of internal pudendal, and cremasteric branch of inferior epigastric. Nerve supply. The anterior one-third of the scrotum is supplied by segment L1 of the spinal cord through the ilioinguinal nerve and the genital branch of the genitofemoral nerve, Fig 17.5. The posterior two-thirds of the scrotum are supplied by segment S3 of the spinal cord through the posterior scrotal branches of the pudendal nerve, and the perineal branch of the posterior cutaneous nerve of the thigh. The areas supplied by segments L1 and S3 are separated by the ventral axial line. The dartus muscle is supplied by the genital branch of the genipmeral nerve. Due to laxity of skin and its dependent position, the scrotum is a common site for edema. Abundance of hair and of sebaceous glands also makes it a site of sebaceous cysts. As the scrotum is supplied by widely separated derm atoms, L1, S3, spinal anesthesia of the whole scrotum is difficult to achieve. The scrotum is healed in male pseudohermaphroditism. Hydrocele is a condition in which fluid accumulates in the processes vaginalis of peritoneum. Types of hydrocele are shown in. Some common abnormalities of scrotal contents are, a tumor of testis hydrocele epididymitis varicocele and spermatocele. Tapping a hydrocele is a procedure for removing the excess fluid from tunica vaginalis. The layers penetrated by the instrument are, a skin dartus muscle and membranous layer of superfacial fascia. C. External spermatic fascia. D. Cremasteric muscle and fascia. Internal spermatic fascia. Testis, the testis is the male gonad. It is homologous with the ovary of the female. It is suspended in the scrotum by the spermatic cord. It lies obliquely, so that its upper pole is tilted forwards and medially. The left testis is slightly lower shape and size than the right. The testis is oval in shape, and is compressed from side to side. It is 3.75 cm long. 2.5 cm broad from before backwards, 
and 1.8 cm thick from side to side. An adult testis weighs about 10 to 15 g. External features, the testis has two poles or ends upper and lower three borders anterior and posterior. Four two surfaces medial and lateral. The upper and lower poles are convex and smooth. The upper pole provides attachment to the spermatic cord. The anterior border is convex and smooth, and is fully covered by the tunica vaginalis. The posterior border is straight, and is only partially covered by the tunica vaginalis. The epididymis lies along the lateral part of the posterior border. The lateral part of the epididymis is separated from the testis by an extension of the cavity of the tunica vaginalis. This extension is called the sims of epididymis. One posteriorly where the testicular vessels and nerves enter the gland. The posterior border of the tunica albogenea is thickened to form an incomplete vertical septum, called the mediastinum testis, which is wider above than below. Numerous septa extend from the mediastinum to the inner surface of the tunica albogenea. They incompletely divide the testis into 200 to 300 lobules. To the tunica vasculosa is the innermost, vascular coat of the testis lining its lobules. 3. Structure of the testis 4. The glandular part of the testis consists of 200 to 300 lobules. Each lobule contains 2 to 3 seminiferous tubules. Each tubule is highly coiled on itself. When stretched out, each tubule measures about 60 cm in length, and is about 0.2 mm in diameter. The tubules are lined by cells which represent stages in the formation of spermatozoa. 5. The seminiferous tubules join together at the apices of the lobules to form 20 to 30 seminiferous tubules which enter the mediastinum, Fig. 17.9. Here they anastomose with each other to form a network of tubules, called the reedy testis. In its turn, the reedy testis gives rise to 12 to 30 efferent ductules which emerge near the upper pole of the testis and enter the epididymis. Here each tubule becomes highly coiled and forms a lobe of the head of the epididymis. The tubules end in a single duct which is coiled on itself to form the body and tail of the epididymis. It is continuous with the ductus deferens. 6. Arterial supply. 7. The testicular artery is a branch of the abdominal aorta given off at the level of vertebra L2. It descends on the posterior abdominal wall to reach the deep inguinal ring where it enters the spermatic cord. At the posterior border of the testis, it divides into branches. Some small branches enter the posterior border, while larger branches, medial and lateral, pierce the tunica albogenea and run on the surface of the testis to ramify in the tunica vasculosa. Venous drainage The veins emerging from the testis form the pampiniform plexus, pampiniform equals like a vine. The anterior part of the plexus is arranged around the testicular artery, the middle part around the ductus deferens and its artery, and the posterior part is isolated. The plexus condenses into four veins at the superficial inguinal ring, and into two veins at the deep inguinal ring. These veins accompany the testicular artery. Ultimately one vein is formed which drains into the inferior vena cava on the right side, and into the left renal vein on the left side. Lymphotic drainage. The lymphatics from the testis ascend along the testicular vessels and drain into the preaortic and paraortic groups of lymph nodes at the level of second lumbar vertebra. Nerve supply. The testis is supplied by sympathetic nerves arising from segment T10 of the spinal cord. They pass through the renal and aortic plex uses. The nerves are both afferent for testicular sensation and efferent to the blood vessels, vasomotor. Histology of seminiferous tubule The seminiferous tubule consists of cells arranged in four eight layers in fully functioning testis. These cells are of two types namely the spermatogenic cells forming the vast majority. A. The supporting sustentacular or cells of Sertola. The spermatogenic cells include spermatogonia, primary spermatocytes, secondary spermatocytes, spermatids, and spermatozoa. The cells of Sertola are tall and columnar in shape extending from the basal lamina to the central lumen. They support and protect the developing germ cells and help in maturation of spermatozoa. Spermatogenesis is controlled by follicle-stimulating hormone, FSH, 
of the anterior pituitary gland. Interstitial cells or cells of Leydig are found as small clusters in between the seminiferous tubules. They secrete testosterone slash androgen, I make man. The activity of Leydig cells is controlled by interstitial cell stimulating hormone, ICSH, of the anterior pituitary gland. Unilateral absence of testis moerchism or bilateral absence of testis onoarchia. Undescended testis or cryptorchidism, the organ may lie in the lumbar, iliac, inguinal, or upper scrotal region, Fig 17.12. The important features of an undescended testis are as follows. A. The testis may complete its descent after birth. B. Spermatogenesis may fail to occur in it. A. A malignant tumor is more prone to develop in it. B. The condition can be surgically corrected. Ectopic testis, the testis may occupy an abnormal position due to deviation from the normal route of descent. It may be under the skin of the lower part of the abdomen, under the skin of the front of the thigh, in the femoral canal, under the skin of the penis, and in the perineum behind the scrotum, Fig 17.13. The important features of an ectopic testis are as follows. The testis is usually fully developed. A. It is usually accompanied by indirect inguinal hernia. B. It may be divorced from the epididymis which may lie in the scrotum. C. Hermaphroditism or intersex is a condition in which an individual shows some features of a male and some of a female. In true hermaphroditism, both testis and ovary are present. In pseudohermaphroditism, the gonad is of one sex while the external or internal genitalia are of the opposite the testis and epididymis may be the site of various infections and of tumors. Testis may be palpated to check any nodules, or any irregularity or size or consistency. Varicocele is produced by dilatation of the pampiniform plexus on veins, Fig 17.14. It is usually left-sided, possibly because the left testicular vein is longer than the right, enters the left renal vein at a right angle and is crossed by the colon which may compress it when loaded. Epididymis, it is an organ made up of highly coiled tube that act as reservoir of spermatozoa. Parts, its upper end is called the head. The head is enlarged and is connected to the upper pole of the testis by efferent ductules. The middle part is called the body. The lower part is called the tail. The head is made up of highly coiled efferent ductules. The body and tail are made up of a single duct, the duct of the epididymis which is highly coiled on itself. At the lower end of the tail this duct becomes continuous with the ductus deferens, Latin conducing ame. Vessels and nerves. The epididymis is supplied by the testicular artery through a branch which anastomoses with and reinforces the tiny artery to the ductus deferens. The venous and lymphatic drainage are similar to those of the testis. Like the testis the epididymis is supplied by sympathetic nerves through the testicular plexus, the fibers of which are derived from segments T11 to L1 of the spinal cord. Histology The tubules of epididymis are lined by pseudostratified columnar epithelium with stereocilia. The tubules are surrounded by connective tissue. The common causes of epididymitis and epididymoorchitis are tuberculosis, filariasis, the gonococcal and other pyogenic infections. Spermatic cord. Development. Testis. It is comprised of spermatogenic cells, cells of Sertola and Leydig cells. Spermatogenic series of cells are derived from endoderm of dorsocaudal part of yolk SAE, i.e. endoderm. Cells of Sertola are derived from epithelial cells, i.e. chylomic epithelium. Leydig cells mesodermal in origin. There is thick tunica albogenia in the testis and the medulla portion of developing gland predominates. Descent of testis, the testes subsequently, they descend to reach the scrotum. Each testis begins to descend during the second month of intrauterine life. It reaches the iliac fossa by the third month. Rests at the deep inguinal ring from the fourth to the sixth month. Traverses the inguinal canal during the seventh month. Reaches the superficial inguinal ring by the 8 tfr month. And the bottom of the scrotum by the 9th month. An extension of peritoneal cavity called the processus vaginalis precedes the descent of testis into the scrotum, into which the testis invaginates. 
the processus vaginalis closes above the testis. Descent does not occur after one year of age. The causes of descent are not well known. The following factors may help in the process. A. Hormones including the male sex hormone produced by the testis, and maternal gonadotropins. B. Differential growth of the body wall. C. Formation of the gubernaculum, this is a band of loose tissue extending from the lower pole of the testis to the scrotum. The gubernaculum helps in the descent of the testis. The remaining part of gubernaculum after the descent of testis is known as ligament of scrotum. D. Intraabdominal temperature and intraabdominal pressure may have something to do with descent of the testis. Ducts. 1. The predominant duct in males is the medially placed mesonephric or Wolffian duct. Distally, it opens into the primitive urogenital sinus. Its development and differentiation is affected by me Iberian INH whiting substance, testosterone, and dihydrotestosterone. Its functional derivatives are, trigone of urinary bladder. Epididymis. Ductus deferens. Seminal vesicles. Ejaculatory duct. 2. Parmesanephric duct forms vestigial component, the appendix of testis. 3. Mesonephric tubules form functional reedy testis and vestigial paradidymis and aberrant ductules. External genitalia. As early as third week of development, the mesenchymal cells from primitive streak migrate around the cloacal membrane. These form raised cloacal fold cranially the folds fuse to form genital tubercle. During sixth week of development cloacal folds are divided into urethral folds anteriorly and anal folds posteriorly. Lateral to urethral folds a pair of swellings, the genital swellings appear. Genital swellings form the scrotum. Genital tubercle elongates to form the phallus. Urethral folds get pulled develop in relation to the developing mesonephros, at the level of segments T10 to T12. Forwards to form lateral wall of urethral groove extending on inferior aspect of phallus. Lining of groove forms urethral plate and is endodermal in origin. Urethral folds close over the urethral plate to form most of the penile urethra. Urethra in the glands penis is formed by invagination of ectodermal cells into the glands. The ectodermal urethra gets continuous with the endodermal urethra. Embryological remnant present in relation to the testis. These are as follows, Fig 17.8. Their importance is that they may sometimes form cysts, one the appendix of the testis or pedunculated hydatid of Morgagni. Two the appendix of the epididymis is a small rounded pedunculated body attached to the head of the epididymis. It represents the cranial end of the mesonephric duct. Three the superior aberrant ductules are attached to the testis cranial to the efferent ductules. They represent the upper mesonephric tubules. Four the inferior aberrant ductules, one or two, are attached to the tail of the epididymals, and represent the intermediate mesonephric tubules. One of them which is more constant may be as long as 25 cm. 5. The paradidymis or organ of Giraldi's consists of free tubules lying in the spermatic cord above the head of the epididymis. They are neither connected to the testis nor to the epididymis, and represent the caudal mesonephric tubules. 6. The cavernous tissue is finer in corpus spongiosum as it contains urethra. 7. Penis is supplied by deep, dorsal arteries, artery to the bulb and superficial external pudendal artery. 8. Tunica vaginalis is the lower persistent part of processes vaginalis, an extension of peritoneal cavity. 9. Right testicular vein drains into inferior vena cava. Left testicular vein drains into left renal vein. 10 lymph node of cloquet is involved in cancer of the penis. Varicocele is common on left side. 11 hydrocele is the commonest cause of swelling of the scrotum.